Disney sucks. Hello, Adam Ryan Donato. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another Hard Review. And I'm here to talk about Disney's latest entry into their animated studios catalog. We have Wish. This is the 100th anniversary of Disney Animation Studios, and they are celebrating it with Wish. It is based on the When You Wish Upon a Star. We have Asha, who wants to have her dream fulfilled just like everyone else in this little town and there's a magic man who kind of runs everything voiced by chris pine who decides which wishes get to be accepted and when asha tries to work for said magician king man she is exposed to the corruption of this city and she's got to save everyone's wishes this is a super disappointing movie i watched this on thanksgiving i know i'm really late to the punch on this one and it left me with a really sour taste in my mouth i really don't like the animation style i believe that they're trying to do this like 2d hybrid with 3d like it's 3d animation but it's made to look like 2d because it's a 100th anniversary movie so we're trying to invoke nostalgia here this movie's definitely trying to invoke nostalgia because there's so many little references to other little disney movies and it's like we get it you made much better movies in the past thanks for reminding me i could be watching peter pan instead and it does kind of go back to its roots we got a disney princess it's a musical it's set in this old time fantasy world and we finally have a villain song that's really all that i want to talk about guys i love me a good disney villain song just a good villain song in general this is the thanks i get get chris pine's character sings this song he's the evil king and asha's in the background kind of hearing this song happen and this song caught a lot of flack because it was compared to a lot of old past disney songs and they're like look how brutal like hellfire and be prepared are and then look how like silly like oh i'm always here when you need to vent are you sure that you're not the prop it's a little too like hip I feel like a little too, like, nice of a villain song. I mean, don't get me wrong, he is definitely, like, a, an asshole. But his villain song is really weak. I mean, I think Chris Pine does a really good job. I really like his little inflections that he puts on things, especially during the less musical parts of the song. Obviously, I'm not a music man, so I, I, I sound stupid talking about how I feel about music. But the chorus, if this is the thanks I get, he just keeps saying that over and over again, which is super lame, and I, I didn't really care much for the visuals of it even though his character i do like how he's animated he's like extremely expressive and it is nice to see a villain who just like enjoys being the villain but i heard people being like yeah i agree with his point of view like he's so correct and that's what makes him an interesting villain i'm like no he's not correct at all he's not an interesting villain whatsoever it's just overall just kind of a waste like i do kind of like how he's like a god it kind of feels like a, a folklore type story but it really didn't do it for me i really don't really care for asha there's a like interview that she did that's like plays before the movies these days and she's like yeah i wanted her to be like funny and smart and pretty but also she's like squirrel and it's like are you talking about a dog that's what dogs do and everyone was talking about how like every disney princess is kind of the same like quirky girl these days which i do think is kind of true asha's personality doesn't really stand out to me much at all compared to other disney princesses i mean when was the last time we even had a disney princess i mean raya she's a disney princess she was very different so i do appreciate raya raya has gotten it's funny because when i first saw raya i really loved it and then it like went super down in my brain and then now that like more disney movies are coming out i'm like i should have appreciated raya while i had the chance but yeah that really reminds me about the era that we're in i'm a big guy who cares about disney eras we had the golden age we had the wartime era silver age bronze age then we have the renaissance the post renaissance really clever name there i keep forgetting the one that was started by like tangled i want to say it's like the resurgence or the reinvigoration the revival era i can't believe i forgot that why it's because they revived it you know we had the hits like tangled and frozen and wreck it ralph we haven't really established a new era and i would like to establish one i feel like we are in the plastic era because it's ever since ralph breaks the internet because in 2016, we had two great Disney animated movies, Zootopia and Moana. And these are two very different types of Disney animated movies. Because one's your traditional, like, Disney musical with Disney princess and everything like that. And the other one's more of a straight up, we're in this animal city. It's kind of a, like, murder mystery kind of thing. And, but there's no music or anything like that, unless you count Shakira. So we were kind of hitting from both angles really well. Then Ralph breaks the internet. 
super big letdown, super unnecessary sequel. It got really annoying and cringy and like self-promoting. That's when we went to like Disneyland and then we saw all the characters walking around. We had the princess song. And then Frozen 2, that's another sequel cash grab, even though I think that's much better than Ralph Breaks the Internet. Followed by Encanto, which I feel like is really the only true hit of this era of Disney movies. Raya the Last Dragon, I think might've been before, but that's immediately been forgotten. Like Raya is a Disney princess, like solidified. My mom, who who's like a Disney adult and she goes to the parks all the time, she does not even know who that is. Then Strange World was also a super big letdown, just a total nothing of a movie, followed by, of course, Wish, which is maybe the worst of them all. I would rather watch Ralph Breaks the Internet because I enjoy those characters, those two lead characters so much, and I'm invested in their friendship. And then Strange World at least is not like constantly reminding me, hey, you know we're Disney and we made all these cool movies? So Wish might be my least favorite of this new era, but yeah, clearly the emphasis is on sequel bait. The only thing that feels anywhere close to the revival era is Encanto and maybe Raya the Last Dragon, but it's very clear that we are deprived of any fresh ideas and anything that has that Disney magic that we've been missing for a very long time. Pixar is also in a slump. The Disney Award, the Best Animated Feature Award. What the hell? Like last year was Pinocchio. This year it's going to be Spider-Verse. I mean, Encanto won the previous year, but that was a different scenario. Lin-Manuel Miranda did a lot of the music for that. And so that's why I feel like it stands out amongst the catalog. And then you'll meet a lot of people who don't even think Encanto is all that special. But Wish is a total swing and miss. I, I think that the biggest offender in this movie is Alan Tudyk as this little goat comedic animal talking animal sidekick little character if we're going to complain about aquafina and ryan the last dragon then oh my god am i going to complain about alan tudyk now he's been in there like little golden boy you know john ratzenberg was like in a lot of those like pixar movies in the earlier days and there's a lot of other people like that that's how alan tudyk's been for disney for like the last decade because i think he's in like frozen i think he's in moana and zootopia and he had that whole weaselton thing like that every time he was in a movie his character like was named like weaselton and then obviously he's k2so and rogue one but yeah he is obnoxiously annoying in here like when he first gets his voice and it's like oh i didn't know my voice would be this low like like it just felt feels like the most standard like kid movie jokes obviously i'm not a child so they're not directed at me i guess but like i love a lot of disney movies some very recently as an adult you can't sit here and be like well the movie just wasn't for you well this is right up my alley man there's some flashes like the opening song with the city of rosas i like the little dance that they have going on and like the chorus is okay i really don't like the i want song so i make this wish to have something more for us than this the songwriters for this movie are like pop songwriters and it's like oh man and like get some musical theater people in there. That's how the Renaissance started. I don't know why we're not just drawing up that blueprint, but it's, yeah, it's really sad and pathetic to see Disney fall so low. It got me really upset. I, I guess you guys are probably guessing I'd probably give this a very low score. I'm only giving it a two out of five. It's not like the worst movie of all time, but if it's nominated for Best Animated Feature, which it already has a Golden Globe nomination for Best Animated Fe Feature, which by the way, there's six nominations and two of them are not Nimona and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, which is fucking offensive. Like, what the hell are we doing? Yeah, Disney sucks. Buck up. Actually, try next time. Like, like this was actually the most annoying, forgettable. All the side characters are so forgettable. The movie's so ugly. It's so self-indulgent and like, oh, remember Disney? Remember when we've been... You know, the whole credits are just like the, the star outlines of like characters from like previous Disney movies. I don't know. Just watch the Once Upon a Time Disney short, the 15, 12 minute one that they did on Disney Plus where they have all the characters from every Disney movie show up. That's much better than this. Two out of five. I didn't like it. Did, did you like it? Thank you for watching this video. Like this video. Comment, subscribe, do whatever the, f you know what? Tell me what your favorite favorite Disney villain song is outside of Be Prepared because that's clearly like the best one. I mean, Hellfire Rocks, Gaston Rocks. Give me some like low key ones. Like there's two Radigan. Like that's why Great Mouse Detective rocks, okay? Because there are two villain songs. We get the Oh Radigan, Oh Radigan. Then we get the goodbye so soon. And isn't this a crime? Like he's such a petty bitch and that's why I love him so much.